Hey everyone, uh, it's been a minute. It's been a little bit, a uh, few weeks, I think. Um, I've been working a lot at work, I'm my day job. Uh, I've been working a lot around the shop, but not on cars. Um, I was coming up on the time limit for getting my electrical inspection done after I built the shop. So I had to uh, finish up some loose ends here and there before I called the inspector to come have a look. And uh, so I finished that up. That's all done. My electrical inspection all passed first try. He was pretty happy. Um, uh, my, uh, I've got, what else did I do? Oh, I got the, uh, the building inspection finished too. Um, that was a little while ago, but uh, same thing. It all passed first try, no problems, no issues, no deficiencies. So that's good. The shop is more or less done. Um, I've got the heat guy coming uh, this week to, no, well, next week, to finish up uh, the final connections and inspection on the heaters. And then I'll have heat because it's uh, mid-October now. And in Ontario, that uh, is when temperatures start to fall off. Um, but I've been doing a bit of work on the Malibu as well. Uh, I've just finished... Um, sinking the radiator uh, support for the F-body radiator. Uh, unfortunately, the radiator that I had was broken on the bottom, so I ordered a new one. Um, and I've got uh, uh, the rad support all set up. Uh, I've got the new radiator, so I've got to move the fans from the old radiator to the new radiator. Um, and uh, i got to progress with my list. My goal is to uh, try and get it uh, running and so I can take it over to my friend Greg's shop and Lindsay and uh, get uh, the exhaust done and get a front end alignment done because the whole front end's all new and it needs to be aligned. Um, so I've got a lot of little things to do to do that. Um, and then I guess I'll continue on, you know, when the things are cold, I'll probably continue on uh, reassembling the rest of the car. Um, so I'll show you what I got done with the rad support. So you can see it's pretty simple. I just uh, cut out the back section of the rad support, made a piece that drops it down about an inch and a half, uh, which should be enough for that F-body rad. I got to unbox that rad, put the fans on it, sit it in place, and then come up with a way to secure it at the top side and uh, start working on connecting everything on this engine. If uh, you watch any of the other videos, you'll know that I made this little shelf for the computer. Um, I did figure out something with my pedal. I'll show you guys that later, later, the accelerator pedal. But I've got a big list to work through to be able to get this beast running. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, this dog's breakfast here that you see is my radiator setup. Uh, obviously, I have some straightening out to do. These uh, rad, rad fans, they're slick. So they just sit in these little tabs here. So you literally just like lift this out and the whole th you just lift up on the fans and the whole thing unclips. So that's fantastic. That makes it a lot easier. So what I've got here is I've got an F body lower radiator hose, which is going to need some trimming by the look of it because it's got a little bit of a tight turn there. And this is a, a GM truck radiator hose. And I know it looks a little uh, long or messed up right now, but if you... Uh, if I hold it down like that, it's actually probably going to look pretty tidy. It's a little tight here, so I may have to just twist it or, or shorten it a bit. Um, I cut the hole, or I've knocked a hole in the bottom of the rad support to accept the factory stud uh, that comes out of the bottom of the radiator. And I'll show you that on this other rad because I want to show you guys what to look for if you're buying a used F-body rad because these these rads seem to be the right radiator for the application. They've got a tranny cooler. They're made for uh, an original LS1 engine. Um, they, uh, the configuration's pretty good and the fans are supposed to be really good. So uh, I want to show you a few things. Just walk over here against the trusty old uh, 55 workbench. So this is the radiator that I had and something to watch out for is this one has the low coolant indicator. Um, the new one that I ordered doesn't. So uh, I don't need the low coolant indicator. So I, I'm glad that I got that. 
Um, this is where the uh, rad fans just sort of clip in. Like I said, they literally just pop right in. That's it. So the problem with this particular radiator is uh, this is my messy workbench. Somewhere or another, not sure where it is off the top of my head, there's a little stud that sticks out the bottom of here about two inches. And this one was just cracked just a little bit around the outside. And fortunately I noticed it when I was uh, doing stuff here because I would not have liked to have installed it, had all the clamps all hooked up, everything all uh, attached and wired and all the stuff, filling it up with antifreeze, and then having a leak out of the bottom of this plastic tank. That'd be unfortunate. So when you're buying a used F-body radiator, obviously you want to look at the condition of the fins. This one's kind of poor. But uh, that's another thing that you want to look for is this, any little things that stick out like this here, you want, you want to make sure that it's not cracked around any of these little brackets because if it's cracked around those brackets, you're pretty much screwed. Um, so fortunately, they're not that expensive of, of a radiator. But uh, so you should probably just buy a new one if you can, if you can afford it. Rock Auto has them pretty cheap. Um, but uh, if you're looking for a used one, that's one thing to watch out for. Okay, I made some 90 degree brackets that go down and they uh, bite onto this lip on the radiator. And uh, pretty solid. Uh, I've got to pull them off and paint them. And then I'll add some washers under these bolts. Um, all I did was took some 16 gauge, bent at 90 degrees, and then weld, welded a piece of, uh, I think it's 3 8 plate on the inside, and then cut a slot in it. So you can see it's just a 90 degree piece of uh, uh, 16 gauge with a piece of 3 16 welded on it. And I slotted it to bite on the edge of this radiator. Uh, I'm probably going to just force that down a little bit more, open up that slot and force it down a little bit more so it gets a little bit more of a bite. Uh, and then I'll paint it. And uh, yeah, that's that. Um, I suppose I could make some sort of shroud that goes over the whole thing. But uh, this will secure it. That's what I'm after right now is securing it. I'll probably maybe later make a nice braked piece that goes up, up and over the whole thing. But for now, the goal is to get it running. And I can't lose sight of that and get focused on details. Um, I'm still trying to do decent work along the way. My big snake of a thing. So as I said, you know, this guy here, when I get it like that, it's not going to look terribly silly. Right, it's a long run for a radiator hose, but uh, it'll do just fine. Okay, so I'm going to pull them off, paint them up, reinstall them, and then carry on to the next thing. Okay, so the radiator's in. It's uh, secure. Parts are painted. Radiator hoses are connected. Uh, I don't think that's too sharp of a bend on the lower radiator hose. It's about the best I can get with that hose, unless I go to a different hose. I guess I'm going to have to see how that goes. I'll keep an eye on it and check it for, uh, see if it's getting enough flow. Um, this will, will get secured down a little bit. Uh, I stretched out the wiring. I've got to run uh, wiring to the fans. And uh, I guess I'm getting into wiring and stuff now uh, on my list. But uh, And then I have to... Um, my buddy McCreary is giving me a hard time about it already. But I have to build a shroud for this radiator. Something that's going to come over and cover this. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that yet. But I I'm not worried about it right now because right now I'm just trying to get it to where it's running and I can take it to get exhaust on and then I'm going to finish the car over the winter. Um, as you can see, there's lots left to do inside. So, but I can uh, strike some things off the list. This is list, it's getting old, September 10th. So, rad install and mount. I think I can take that one off and the rad hose is off. Next thing I'm going to work on is the fan wiring. I got to look at the trans cooler lines. Um, getting mixed uh, reviews from people online and stuff about whether or not to run the uh, 
trans cooler and that radiator, uh, if that's good enough for the 4L80, um, I'm probably going to try it for now and see how it goes. And if I have to add an external one later, I'll add an external one. But that's uh, where I'm at with the radiator. Um, I still have a pile of stuff to do, as you can tell. I got. I'm not sure where how this is going to work out for an intake with this giant radiator hose here. Um, I think I was telling you guys before that I'm going to. Uh, McCurry is sending me a wedge piece to straighten this, and hopefully that'll bring this down a little bit because with the radius of the hood, it just grazes this piece right here, and um, I'm hoping if that's straight, then it'll clear. It clears this for some reason but it won't clear here. So worst case, I've got a notch and modify my hood and get some paint work done. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna progress on to wiring the fans. Um, but that's my radiator install complete. Uh, I'm not sure how far I'll go with this video, but I'm just gonna keep working. And uh, I've got, like I said, I got a few days off and I will uh, see what I can get done in those few days.